Hello, we are live. I can already see two thumbs up, that's nice. Thank you for those thumbs up. Um, I'll allow you all some time to arrive. Hello, NSEM. Great to have you here. It's nice to see people keep coming back and have fun drawing together. And it's amazing seeing the work that, that people upload. I'm always so thrilled to see the work that people do after our live sessions together. Hi, Stina. Wonderful to have you here too. Um, yeah. I have a uh, hello sketchy. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. I have an exciting project starting tomorrow, which kind of started today, which has kind of been going on for a while. I'm going to paint my first mural and it's about 10 by 10 meter wall. And it's a building that's going to be knocked down and I'm going to be painting the residents of the building on the wall. And um, I have a, a, um, a natural paint company that's going to be supplying the, the paints that I work with because I just can't make that much ink to cover a 10 by 10 meter wall. Um, so I'm, I've never dr painted or drawn that big. So it's going to be really exciting and I hope it's going to, um, you know, that my drawing style is going to transfer with a, I'm going to use a 22 centimeter brush, um, like basically like a broom to be painting the wall. And I presume it's just going to be like using any flat brush or a broad edge pen just on a much bigger scale. So that's gonna be um, uh, really exciting. And I'll definitely be posting a lot of updates on Instagram as it all takes shape. And uh, it was cool. As part of that, I, I gave an ink making workshop today for the residents and the, the people living in that uh, neighborhood. Um, and there were some kids that came and I talked to them about it and they went and asked their parents if they can be on the wall. So um, I was able to collect three kids that I'm going to add to that wall. And I don't know how many people are going to be on it yet. So I haven't really been able to plan the composition. I'm going to be painting huge and on the fly, just adding people's faces as they come past. So um, <laughs> it's a super fun kind of unpredictable project, which is starting tomorrow. So uh, you can um, stay tuned on Instagram to see a lot more of that. Clive is here, excellent. I can see lots of people are here. Vin is here, so exciting. We're gonna draw Vin today. Um, let's uh, uh, bring him into the party. Here's Vin. He's such a wonderful and prolific illustrator, um, great inkist and sketchy friend. Um, I've already drawn Vin a few times since I started using sketchy and constantly re-inspired by his work. So it's really fun to be drawing Vin today, who's also one of the, the featured artists for the upcoming Inktober 2020 Portrait Challenge. So uh, get onto that and um, draw along with us for the entire month of October. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the good luck and the excitement about the project. Um, I'm, yeah, it's gonna be cool. So, so just fo follow that. So, I gave an ink workshop for the ink making workshop for the people who live there and we just walked around the neighborhood and collected a lot of cool stuff. Speaking of ink making and Inktober, if you use the the code, if you haven't already purchased the Ink Naturally class and Inktober, then now is a great time to do it because if you get the Ink Naturally class and use the coupon code Ink Naturally, all capitals, um, you get 40% off another class, so you could use it on Inktober and have a lot of inky fun. So that's super cool. All capitals, one word, ink naturally as the coupon code. Um, and speaking of natural ink making, here uh, I have some stuff to share with you. So I'm going to be using a lot of uh, Acorn ink during um, Inktober. And I've been busy collecting acorns. It's one of my favorite dark inks. And this is a jar of rusty stuff. And so next week, that's why I'm glad you're here, Clive, because you asked me about this yesterday, I think. Um, you can use the entire acorns. You can use the ink caps, get collecting and foraging. And as a lead in to next week's live stream, we're going to have a, a ink making special together. So I hope a few of you are going to 
get on board and use Acorn Inc. during Inktober. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and so keep your eyes peeled for rusty things, uh, screws, bolts, nails, anything you find which is rusty. Um, it's treasure. It's yours. And you're going to make some really nice dark ink with it. So I just made this ink today. Um, and I have two colors from it. And one is kind of the natural uh, acorn ink color, which is a kind of warm brown. Um, and this is with iron, which makes it super dark, a nice black um, color. So I'm going to use both of these today. And I think this photo of Vin, super cool, so shadowy. Um, I, I love the lighting. It's not the kind of thing I would usually pick. Um, but it's just super fun, and I think it's it really it's offering itself to be drawn with brushes. So we'll do some brush work today. I have a couple of different brushes here, a couple of different pens, um, a broad edge stick pen, and a really fine metal nib here. So that's what I'm going to be drawing with. You can use whatever you like, um, and uh, <laughs> um, I'm just checking out, does ink fade? Good question. So the Acorn ink with iron is amazingly light fast. Um, this Acorn ink without iron is going to be less light fast, I imagine, but it's also um, uh, pretty good. Um, and all of these natural inks, they vary greatly in how light fast they are. Um, but the iron being added to it as a modifier um, really improves the light fastness of the ink. So for these dark ones, it's a it's a really wonderful wonderful ink. Um, <laughs> Anish, I'm, I'm glad you like the room. I like this uh, this angle here. Right, it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I missed the wood. Cool, Stin, Stina. Uh, yeah, cool wood. Let's get into this drawing. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Thank you, Vin, so much for, for being our muse today. Um, and I'm just going to take some inspiration from Vin. I, I saw he's got this really cool quote on uh, his Instagram profile, which says, lost the likeness, but like the lostness. And in April, you had this really cool video where you just kind of um, drew this blob and turned it into an amazing drawing. Um, so... Let's stay loose and then add some brushwork. That's what I'm going to do anyway. Um, and just have a lot of fun with Vin today. And so cool that you're here with us. Um, it's a, a special pleasure. Okay, I'm going to start. Am I? Maybe I, maybe I won't. Um, I was going to start with this um, dark ink, but I think it might actually be cooler to start with the light ink to just do this quick underdrawing thing because that was something you did Vin where you had this different color the blob drawing um, so I'm going to use my broad edge pen here and um, just start drawing some shapes so keep it kind of loose and then come back and, and do fun things with it and there, there's so much darkness in here um, I think it's really offers a lot of opportunity to kind of play around and have fun with it um, and I think so brushwork is it's going to be a fun way to handle it but just kind of we can start find our place by just putting in a drawing it's cool to have the arms in here um, yeah, it's often fun um, to zoom back from the full portrait and and get some some gesture in. Silish, yes, Silish is here, and it is Vin. Um. Anyone have any questions? I'm just kind of. Drawing around, maybe your owl as well, totally in the zone, just making shapes. It's cool to 
you know, kind of figure out what's, what you, I don't know. I don't want to overthink this too much. Just wondering about compositional things and maybe skewing things a bit. Um, but let's see, let's just let it skew itself uh, however it wants to. We end up with some big arms here. I think I would like, now I want my head to be much bigger. So I kind of started here with a bigger head and, and since I'm starting with this light ink, I'm just gonna kind of draw over it and make the head bigger. I, I can just do it. So, um, and that's super fun working with the light color ink to just um, redraw things. Like just jumping into it without any preliminary drawing. Um, if you're using a light ink, you, you know, that's your safety net, just redraw it. And when you come back with your dark ink, <clears throat> you can kind of uh, change things around or just leave as much of that as you want. Sometimes it's really fun to have these doubled up lines. Um, whoops. There's a, I've seen some really amazing portraits that have these cool um, kind of like double perspective things going on. And, and each kind of additional random odd line can can just make it really kind of fun and interesting. <laughs> Stuart, yes, it is a tricky photo. Um, and as it's going to get darker and darker, I feel it's um, you know it's totally totally safe to be able to just redraw things with this light ink. Um, so I um I got this so we can get in a bit closer um, as we focus on the portrait. So if I don't know how you're working if you go straight from the um, screen here or you've got like another um, device where you've got your reference arm um, or you've gone to the Photoshop and you've printed out the, the reference drawing in advanced. That'd be cool. Um, I wonder now if I should just, maybe I should be painting already. Um, just just kind of get on with it and see what happens. Um, and as Stuart said, this is really tricky. When I saw this, I was, I was a bit scared, but it's a very cool photo and um, I wonder what, what we're all gonna do with it. Um, so I've got a bit of ink here and I'm going to spread this out as far as I can kind of because it's going to, otherwise this is really going to take a while to dry. Um, but squinting down and just seeing that highlight on the nose and cheeks, it's, it's such a little amount of light. Um, but I'm just going to yeah, spread all this ink out so it dries quickly. And this kind of color, I guess traditionally we wouldn't think of it as ink, I guess. Like when I got into ink making, I was like, oh, is, it, is this ink if it's that light? But sure, why not? But it's cool that the same, the same fluid with some rust in it becomes really, uh, really dark, really inky. So yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, this week, if you're able to start collecting acorns and rusty things, um, and we'll be able to uh, make this ink together next week. Because I think, like, I I'm really excited about doing Inktober with uh, homemade ink. Um, so if anyone else is keen, then I think this is a really good one to do it with. <laughs> so it's interesting in this relatively short uh, time frame to think, okay, how how am I gonna um in what kind of uh, 
order am I going to do things so that they can hopefully dry a bit and then I can work back into it um, <clears throat> And I you guess know, kind of detaching from the background, I think, and you know, what can I do with the background? What's going to bring, what's going to make this cool light on the face um, really sing? So this is good practice. I had, I hadn't, I've been kind of busy, so I haven't thought too much about how I'm actually going to do this, um, which I think will be good for my my wall painting project starting tomorrow. Where I'm just kind of be like, hey, do you want to be drawn on this wall? Okay, and just take people's photo and, um, and maybe just add them to the wall. So it's a good good practice. Just um, figuring out as I'm drawing how I'm going to do it. I think it's always, you know, it's a fun kind of way to go about things. Um, I'm going to flood the background with um, with this dark ink. While I'm waiting for this stuff to dry here, push it around a bit so it's going to a bit faster and I don't really need a highlight on the t-shirt so much. I'll just deaden that highlight a bit. Um, apologize um, <coughs> for the camera wobbling if I'm, I'm getting too rough with this. I know Stuart that's something that um, that bothers you sometimes. Um, okay, I'm looking up to questions here. I see the big things going on. The squirrels are so super busy with acorns these days. Tiny ADHD nut scavengers. Yeah, and um, I get out foraging at this time of year and I totally feel like a squirrel. And I was talking to someone recently and a squirrel just came out um, right next to us. And I was like, hey, squirrel. I just kind of joined the conversation. Totally unafraid, looked up and kept walking. Um, Kindred spirits. Um, oh, this is a good question. The acorns are green. Um, you can use them. You can just collect them and dry them. Um, yeah, drying is a great way to preserve them. Um, if you cook them from fresh green acorns, that would work too. And it's it's great to kind of crush them up a bit. And when they're fresh, they um, I guess they're easier to to break down. You could um, put it in a, a mixer. Um, so yeah, once they fall from the tree, I wouldn't go waste my energy picking them from the tree because it, like at the time of year when they're all raining down, that's when you want to get out there and be collecting them. Um, and I, I love that thing about there are certain materials that we can use and forage and gather. Um, and when the time is right, they just um, offer themselves freely in abundance, which is wonderful. And acorns um, are one of those gifts of nature, which just, okay, so this is kind of gray, um, diluted down like this. Uh, this is the first time I've really used it. I just made it, finished up this afternoon with the help of uh, Iken, my seven-year-old who had a birthday party yesterday. That was fun. And there's all bits of grit and stuff in this. It's totally unfiltered. Um, and, and I can see the, the pigment is kind of separating in a cool, fun way. And uh, that's another great thing about ink making, just coming up with all these kind of uh, different textures and stuff. You could put this through a, a coffee filter and get all those chunks out, but sometimes I think they just add this kind of um, unplanned visual interest um, to, to our work. So it's nice to collaborate with the materials in this way. And setting up this contrast, just a dark background, it instantly feels cooler. Um, I like it. With the reference photo in the background, it's like, well, it's pretty busy. There's you know a lot going on, but 
and just kind of reducing it down to this simple um, space of ink, I think is a fun way to go about it. I'm trying to be careful around here because the iron in this ink will react with this because it's still wet. So if I, if I hit this space with this ink, the iron will just kind of bleed into it and start darkening this space, which is something at the moment I'm trying to avoid. Um, yeah, because this is, that's often the case with these natural inks that they react with each other in different ways. Um, but maybe, I don't know, it's already feeling kind of dry, but there are some spaces where I could start putting this in. I'm just, uh, I've got all sorts of stuff on my desk. Just check the comments. Um, with or without the caps, you can, if you, I have tried everything, um, mix it all together. That's what this ink is that I'm using. It's got everything in it. If you separate the caps and make it just with caps, then you will have um, uh, a different quality of ink. You can also, like you see here, that the, the skin of the nut, um, you can separate that. It's very um, time intensive, but I have made ink where I've just peeled all of the acorns. Um, and then I've made an ink for just from the the nut, um, an ink just from the skin, an ink from just just from the caps. Um, so you can try them out if you're really curious, um, and you get slightly different results, um, different subtleties in the ink that you make. Um, but this particular one I'm using just has everything in it. Thanks for asking. Oh yeah, and if you miss out now, the tops will be around. It, but I, the first time I made um, acorn ink, I it was in winter and they were they were already kind of decomposing and turning black, and it was perfect really. Uh, I was able to make really nice ink from them too. So from now into winter, um, maybe even early next year, you'll still be able to use the acorns that you find. Another great one at the moment is walnut husks. It makes a really nice dark brown. So if you've got walnuts around, collect those too. Um, yeah. Okay. Just um, strategically talking a bit, and uh, it's all drying, so that's nice. Um, how's everyone going? With this tricky. Oh, it's it's still uh, it's, it's still a bit wet. So um, it's like bleeding out, but maybe it's okay. Once it, um, yeah, we've got heaps of time. So hopefully this will dry and then at the end, we'll just be able to add a few crisp lines to it. Um, I'm aware that you're maybe not doing exactly the same thing as me, but that's what I'll be able to do. Um, Oh yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> I just thought there, do I have a heat gun or a blow dryer? Um, not at the moment. Sometimes I do uh, use, well, I haven't for a long time actually. I used to use uh, a blow dryer to accelerate the drying time of my, my work. Um, but in recent years, I've, um, try to reduce the kind of uh, energy expenditure of the, the work that I create. And if, if it can dry in its own time, then, um, then I'll let it do that. I don't know how much energy a, a blow dryer uses, but I like it when they're air dried. It would be nice to be in a, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> On Tuesday nights, we have a, um, a live drawing session, which you're all welcome to come and draw along with us. 
and someone uses a blow dryer. So we were sitting drawing, talking, and then occasionally on Zoom, it's just like, woo! Um, so, and that's, that's a totally cool way to speed up your drawing time. Maybe I'm just um, totally kind of placing this unnecessary limitation upon myself by um, not using one. And I think in the live streaming context, it might be like an intense kind of oral experience um, if I keep whipping out the blow dryer. Oh, this is fun. Just like smudging ink around can be like totally fun. Adding some kind of dry brush effect, fingerprinty smeariness. Um, oh yeah, thank you for answering, Stuart. I live in Göttingen, in central Germany. Uh, <laughs> you can all blow dry away. I can't hear you. No one else can hear you. Yeah, so feel free to use your blow dryers. Oh, this is cool. There's some kind of sediment on the edge here, which is really the edge of the glass, which is really dark. So. Um, you can just kind of got this cool, nice dark shadow from that. I noticed that I'm kind of like I've slowed down from that initial fast kind of uh, drawing. And I catch myself doing that, and I think, oh, it's, I have that. It has such a life when you stay loose and. Um, No, some just something I do. Take a break sometimes. Has anyone who's watching um, painted a mural before? Or anyone who's painted really big? Have any tips? Putting a brush on a broomstick and just whoosh, dancing with it. Um, I'm very curious about how, how I'm going to handle it, how it's all going to work out. It'll be an exciting adventure. I've done a few um, one by one meter paintings and portraits and stuff, but not not bigger, not a ten by ten. So that's going to be uh, fun, I guess. And the cool thing is, or well, the the actual before I knew what what where it was going to be and who I was going to paint, it, this whole. A mural painting thing actually started uh, last year. Um, I was in a, uh, went to this cool meeting at the Musa, which is where I have a studio space, and there are a bunch of people there with all sorts of cool creative projects. And and someone talked about recycling timber from um, construction sites, um, and said if you know anywhere a house is being torn down, then I'd like to have the wood. And then I was like. If a house is being torn down, I'd like to paint it first. Um, and now, uh, that was in December last year, and then some people kind of got onto it on my behalf and um, found a building for me to paint that's going to be torn down. Um, oh, Stina painted a ceiling. Uh, get much paint on you. Oh, 
I'm going to darken the background a bit more. And sometimes with this ink, there's going to be like a sediment. So if you give it a stir, and kind of have a even distribution of pigment. Um, there are some places I want to dry a bit faster, so I'm just going to lift some ink. Oh, splashed into the face. Oh well. So now, um, if this wasn't live, <laughs> be a great opportunity to go away and do something else while waiting for it to dry. Or I could just do a blow dry. I don't even know where our blow dryer is. Still settling in to our new house. Happy accident splash, that's always a good um, a good attitude to have when you splash ink across your, your work. Thanks for that fruit face, 22. Yeah, you can use acorn caps as a loud whistle. I'm not sure who's been congratulated. Okay, you didn't miss the type of paintbrush I'm using. I didn't I didn't talk about it. This is called a Cosmotop Spin, size 20, from the brand Da Vinci. It's a synthetic watercolor brush. It holds a lot of ink or paint. Um, so, and it has wonderful kind of um, potential for line variation because you can do really fat strokes. I have something to do it on. Um, so if you're working big, this is not super dark, but just to kind of, um, you can have really, it's great for putting down a lot of ink, um, but if you, if you can work really lightly um, and do some kind of line work with it as well. But the intensity of the line work with a brush is never as dark as with a pen. Um, Anisha's asking if this is this brush is expensive. Um, I bought a set of these brushes. I think it cost 20 euros, and there were five brushes in it, in one of these mats, which, so it's like it's a, it's a good quality brush. It's not crazy expensive. Um, but it's not super cheap either. But this one here, um, which I was using a little bit, this uh, this is this is like a one euro sixty seven, I think. Um, <clears throat> so it's nice to have expensive brushes, but you don't need to have expensive brushes. You can also work with sticks. Um, but yeah, for filling in large areas, it's nice to have um, have a brush. this to be dry. What else can I do? I'm waiting for it to dry. Um, I could uh, start doing some some kind of line work in the area where it's not as important to me as the face. What's everybody drawing with? If you're drawing along, what have you got? So this, it could be interesting just um, working into this not totally dry Space.
it's always like walking the the um walking the fine line of um you know control and and chaos working with wet mediums i think this is not super wet but um you know just some of that definition which can be really nice and crisp line work is um lacking a bit here but it you know has its own kind of interesting quality I definitely like the contrast and um, it's adding a nice touch to it ah. Right now I can hear the neighbors singing along to some music, that's nice. Now I can hear one of my children crying downstairs. It's nice that I don't have to deal with it right now. Ah, cool. Andy using calligraphy pen, pencil and watercolor. Um, Stina, I will mostly be using this kind of ink, um, Acorn ink. That's why I thought it was cool to kind of gear up for it. Um, it's going to be, uh, I'll have a varying. Uh, Ink sessions that I'll be doing, some of it were pretty line work. Um, I kind of, kind of be moving into it uh, with line work and then getting into some brush work. And, but um, Acorn Ink is going to be the main star, um, the main thing I'll be using in an ink table with a few other little uh, treats. In there. Hilda has a black walnut ink. Awesome. Now is walnut time. Um, even if they're decomposing and turning to slime on the lawn in the grass, you can collect them and you can make really wonderful ink with walnut husks. So um, anyone who can get their hands on some walnuts, um, you can save the nuts to eat and you can make awesome ink with the husks. And today, um, it's always good to try new things. In the workshop that I gave, um, we tried for the first time just using walnut leaves. So now before they drying, turning ground, brown on the ground, um, they're still green and we just chopped them up and boiled them for a while and got a really nice um, brown ink from walnut leaves as well. I haven't done a lot of leaf ink um, so far, but it's just like tea, anything that um, has tannin in it. Because the thing here, this this darkness that we're getting is because the acorn um, acorns are so high in tannin, and then that's the reaction with the iron which creates this awesome darkness. Um, so any any plant which is high in tannin, you'll be able to make um, awesome ink with by mixing it with uh, your rusty stuff. Hmm. I'm wondering about where my focus is, and maybe my drawing is just not <laughs> very focused yet. Just look on the screen, like, oh, that's kind of undefined. The um, glare on the ink is a bit unfortunate. Oh, um, I'm sure someday I'll have a really optimized lighting setup for my. Live stream business. Um, the once this is dried a bit, like the the broad edge callig calligraphy pen will be great for like drawing the text on the t-shirt if, if we if we want that in there. Um, I think it's not totally dry, but I think it's time to to kind of brave 
the face. So here I've got all this stuff that I've kind of set up with my um, brushwork and drawing that, that I did earlier. Um, and now it's kind of a, the play of um, you know, adapting to that, looking around, kind of being like, okay, where's the best place to put this line? How are things lining up in the face? And um, uh, and then just choosing where to, where to make your mark and where to what to use of what's already there um, and what, you know, where you can kind of uh, dance around it a bit and change things. So it's a fun kind of experiment to, to make a, a really messy, wet um, piece live and then figure out how I'm going to um, navigate it. Well, I just thought I could fill in some more shadow down here. That might give me a few seconds drying time. I'm playing with rust be up to date with your tetanus shot. Mm. Something funny happened with the rust when I was checking my setup here because I've got this iPad which has all these magnetic points all over it. And um, and this is kind of encrusted with uh, this iron salt stuff. Um, and some of it fell on the paper, jumped up and got magnetized and stuck to the, the iPad. So I hope my iPad's not going to rust. Yeah. Apparently you can buy um, like these kind of iron crystals, um, which I guess is used in dyeing, um, dyeing walls, fabric, um, not in becoming deceased. But if you're um, creating fabric dyes, um, I'm not sure if it's intended for, for ink making, but you can, you can make your own. But if you can't make your own, apparently you can buy these ferrous crystals, which is like iron crystals that you can just mix into your, um, your inks if you need it. So, eyebrow has just grown, <laughs> flooded up in, into the forehead. That's special. Nice. Just decided to um, shift the eye up a bit, like I had drawn it here, but I think you know, I kind of feel like it's going to be better if it's a bit higher. Oh, it's very wet here. Oh, that kind of ended up being a bit bigger than I 
Take some of that back. <laughs> Funny that you just asked that, Vin. Do you use napkins? I was just like, whoa, look at all that ink. Um, yeah, I'm gonna lift a bit here. But it's cool that it's so dark in the reference photo that whatever I do, wherever it bleeds, I'm just gonna be able to kind of um, keep compensating for it as it dries. Um, I think, yeah, usually I have a much more kind of controlled approach and I leave time for things to dry. Um, but now, yeah, just just go with it. And maybe, you know, something new is going to happen. Um, I think this is one that will be really good to come back to when it's dried properly, which is probably not going to happen in the next 14 minutes. Um, but I, I've, I've done pieces, portraits, which I think have been really formative um, for the work and the, the way I like to approach portraits now where totally chaotic things have happened um, and I've made a mess and then afterwards I was like oh that's if I could control that kind of mess making um, like it just added a really cool kind of life to a portrait um, so I'm not afraid of making a mess sometimes it really work out to my advantage, sometimes maybe less so, but um, I guess it's the dance of learning to control the mess. And with a lot of things I've done recently, I felt like I've been really controlled and I get in these phases where it's all controlled and then it's fun just to kind of break out and, um, and try things, try things out. Oh, what a love. That sounds really cool. A blue pigment. I'm not sure what plant that is. Um, oh yeah. Hilda. Um, the vinegar. Um, it's okay to draw with vinegar. If you're using metal nibs, the um, this ink is going to kind of rust your, your nibs as well but vinegar is actually a mordant so it kind of um, it, it helps the, the ink to um, to enter the fibers of the paper so yeah it's it's totally fine to to add ink and um, there are some ink making recipes where um, they have vinegar in them and also something that's used in um, dyeing of fabrics to use vinegar as a mordant, or I think buttermilk, or there are some other few, few things you can use. And it actually, yeah, it helps the, um, it helps the, the pigment to really get into the paper. So drawing with vinegar is totally fine. And that's, yeah, in case I didn't mention it before, once you start finding your rusty things, then you, it, it'll be in the video, which will be out next week when we draw together. Um, but you put vinegar, maybe some salt in there, um, and every couple of days you can tip that solution out. Careful not to drop it on any metal surfaces. Um, but you pour it out and let the, the metal breathe. And then you can put that um, liquid back in, and then it will continue to like corrode. And, um, and it's kind of back and forward in the beginning. Um, and you're... If you do it over a prolonged period of time, you end up with a really intense uh, kind of rust uh, iron mix, which is great for the ink making.
I'm just wondering now, with like 10 minutes left, this is something I'm definitely going to have to return to, 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 to kind of get some definition. But it's fun experimenting together. Um, and some of those, some areas here where I can just kind of, I haven't, haven't gotten some kind of uh, dark areas here and it's so dark. I think just spreading some of that is going to help. Um, when I come back and like rework into it when it's really dry, I we'll have this kind of crazy blurry thing underneath. Um, And this is something, um, when you've got like pools of ink somewhere, you can kind of borrow from it, pull it over somewhere else, um, which I just had in a few places here, to kind of spread it out. And that's gonna um, it'll dry a bit faster. When you've got pools of ink um, that aren't really dark, you, it, you can get some super cool shapes as the ink starts to separate or it like um, condenses at the edges and, and those kind of chaotic shapes can be um, totally fun. But that's something with with lighter inks when when you leave a lot let it dry and then work onto it again and let it dry that's a really um can just get some wonderful kind of shapes happening with that Big Al is here. Nice to have you here. So if I'm, although this is a blurry, watery kind of mess at the moment with a really big eye, when I squinting down at it, um, I think the the lighting, this um, really interesting lighting on the face is, is looking quite cool. This like the, the highlights, it, it still has potential. Um, it's not a, it's, it's not going to be finished in this session, but it's, it's something uh, that I'll be able to spend a bit more time on. And um, I think, yeah, it's, uh, it's still going to turn out fun. Either way, it's fun. I hope you're all having fun too. And something I'm going to get onto really soon is making alcohol-based things, which will dry a lot faster. Um, I look forward to um, sharing my experimentation with that um, as I get into it. And now, just across the road, is a an apothecary in Germany. Um, chemists are called Apotheken, which is just like apothecary, and there are all these like fairy tale timber frame houses around and across the road is an apothecary and I live next to a sandstone wall. Um, it's it's very fairy tale here. So I'll be able to go to the apothecary to get some um, some alcohol to, to make some alcohol based things with. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe that could be, um, that'd be something, yeah, that'd be something cool to do for the next Ink Naturally session to, to cover that. Because I would just, um, there's such a, a wealth of uh, variation and subtlety and, and so much fun with all these homemade inks, but the drying time um, is something I've often had to just take into account. Um, but I'd be really super happy to have... Uh, I made inks that also dry really fast so I can use them when I'm uh, 
out and about. How's everyone going? Anyone already finished? Grain alcohol. I'm not sure what that is. Is that corn? Um, in Germany, there's like an alcohol called corn. I would use um, rubbing alcohol or um, isopropanol, which is what I can get here from the apothecary. Um, which is a really high percentage alcohol. You get it in a small bottle and it's used, um, I guess you can use it for cleaning and different stuff. And uh, I bought it in the past and I like, what are you going to do with this? Because it's um, super dangerous if you were to drink it or something. Um, but that's, that's what I intend to use. Isopropanol. Or I think you can use ethanol as well. Um, with the remaining three minutes, I'm not really sure there's a lot I can do with this. I'm going to let it dry. Um, and I think some of that blurry kind of chaos stuff which has happened will be a, a super cool foundation to, once it's dry, to add some crisp line work to it. I'm really curious to see how this ends up. Um, Maybe I'll just add another eye over here because it's, it's looking a bit uh, odd with just one giant pupil. So thank you for, for joining me on this journey. Um, collect your, um, any, any acorns you find and rusty things. And, um, and tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, uh, in a week's time, we can um, go into more depth with uh, the exact process of that ink making. But for now, just collecting would be great. Or if you already have some rust and vinegar mix preparing, because that's the thing that needs the most time with this acorn ink, to get this really nice darkness. Um, you, need, um, you need to have a really good iron mix. Um, and something that's super high in tannin. Um, so using the acorns are just great. And any other, um, I haven't tried it with black tea. I think that would be worth trying. Um, cool, Vin. Thank you for your endorsement. <laughs> Glad you've been here with us. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to taking it another step further and um, and sharing it with you. And, and thank you for the... Um, the motivation, like uh, that, that that quote from Instagram, I, I just love. Um, lost the likeness, but but like the lostness, and yeah, I, I think you're yeah the way you share that kind of fearless um, way of just getting into it and drawing is so so fun to to get in and learn from. So that's uh, definitely informed my kind of what I've been doing here. Um, so I'm I'm really. Uh, Looking forward to, to adding some crisp line work to this. It's going to be cool. Um, black tea and iron is the winner. Thank you, Andy. Cool. Um, I'm glad you've tried it. It's, it's so cool that people are out there trying things that I haven't tried yet. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's great to have you all here to draw together. And it's just always a lot of fun. <laughs> um, coffee. Coffee is also really good that there's uh, a lot of great things to draw with. So thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you to, to Vin for being here. Thank you, Sketchy. Um, I hope you all have a, a really wonderful week. 
and share your work. You can hashtag Ink Naturally or tag me, tag Vin. Um, and we'd love to see what, what you've come up with today. And I look forward to sharing this with you when the next step is, is complete. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And, and have, a, have a wonderful week.